Okay, so John, I'd just like to say how much of an honour it is to have this interview with you today and for your great accomplishment in motorsports and just a role model for a lot of people. Well, um, I was fortunate enough to be uh, good enough for what I love doing uh, uh, to uh, actually uh, make a career around it. In that, uh, I suppose it all started from well, my father, of course, was British uh, motorcycle sidecar champion uh, before the war and then just after the war. And uh, that's when I became, shall we say, uh, an assistant, <laughs> polishing the bike and doing things. And it all started uh, largely when he came home one day and presented me with three tea chests. Uh, which was a, a motorcycle, all in pieces. And he said, put it together and uh, you can ride it. And that's how my first connection came there. Uh, so that's set the whole scene uh, for, for what I've experienced so far in life. So from a very young age you were involved in motorsports? Involved first of all with spanners and yeah. uh, everything else and uh, loving tinkering and putting things together uh, and then uh, yes from a very young age yes there's pictures of me at a circuit not far from here Brands Hatch uh, in the uh, mid 30s uh, sitting on my father's uh, sidecar outfit saddle so uh, it is quite early okay so you've recently taken over Butwell Park but you've had an involvement in it before what changes have you brought to the takeover of Butmore Park? Well, Butmore Park, I'd frankly never heard of <laughs> until my son uh, came to me and said, Daddy, uh, can I go to Butmore Park with uh, your, uh, your friend who's uh, coming down? because he said uh, that uh, he's going to Butmore Park and I could go with him if I get your permission. I said, okay. And he came back and he said, Daddy, that's what I want to do. He was just eight years old, so we're talking about 1999. Um, and then I became a cartoon father, you know, doing all sorts of things, uh, being a mechanic with it, being a, a timekeeper, being an advisor, and a cook and van driver, all the lot, and chief sponsor. <laughs> but um, Butmore Park, Bill Sisley, early in the 2000s, came to me and said, I've got to improve the facilities would you help me? He knew I was, uh, since I had closed my race team, I was involved in the uh, property uh, side uh, relative to both construction and, uh, and the uh, sale and letting of them. And so, um, as he got contacts, so I had plans drawn up for a coach house which was uh, for the uh, clubhouse, I should say, and for the paddock buildings. And so it was instrumental in uh, arranging and putting together uh, the finance for building these here. So that was a um, early uh, involvement, uh, which was no more than that, other than my investment in, in these buildings. Then about five years ago, after many promises and everything else, I was able to safeguard Butmore by buying a freehold. Uh, because one never knows this age. Uh, it was changing hands, etc. You didn't know what would happen. So uh, freehold. And then after that, I started negotiations with Bill, which ran on and ran on, it was somewhat, 
uh, Bill Susley, the owner, who had, uh, came here and had uh, created the original circuit. And so um, we finalized that in April of last year. What we've done since? That's the question you asked, I think. Yes, yes. What we've done since? That's well, uh, you have to ask the people around, but I think that if you knew Buckmore, you will see that there's lots of changes taking place. Um, if you look at what Buckmore is, there's something very special about Buckmore in that <coughs> it is unusual for a cart circuit to have an undulating nature like this circuit. This is rather like a mini Brands Hatch or a mini Grand Prix circuit. <coughs> and so it presents a somewhat better challenge than having a circuit laid out on a flat area, you know, perhaps in a, just on a piece of airfield or wherever it might be. Uh, so there's a lot of character in the circuit. And this is showing up because it's been a superb training ground for people like Jensen Button and Lewis Hamilton. Jensen is up there on the wall there, yeah. uh, as such, because all, who, so, who came to notice on their performances on this track. So it's very special there, but it was suffering from uh, being tired being tired uh, and so we've been looking in in detail and trying to one uh, bring the circuit to a, a standard which is you know probably relative to uh, its barriers and such like uh, is of the highest in the country we're getting rid of all the tires, etc., which before lined the circuit as the safety medium. They've done a wonderful job in their time, but they're dated. And so we've been out to create greater runoff areas, which in turn have been tarmacked, and purpose-built barriers all around the circuit. This opens the whole place up and starts to smarten it up, as well as make it, frankly, a better racing circuit. Um, it will become also a little more picturesque because uh, those, some of those runoff areas will all be painted shortly in the same way as when you look in on television to a Grand Prix. Uh, so um, we will be very much a mini Grand Prix. So that's all happening. All the equipment here has been changed. Uh, each of the batches of carts running from the ones that a five-year-old will drive uh, to a 50-year-old will drive. Um, they've all been changed in, in a very latest equipment brought in uh, so that uh, it doesn't only give the person who comes here uh, the opportunity to really uh, experience a exciting and enjoyable time uh, in some late equipment which responds nicely uh, but also uh, from a business point of view obviously uh, we need to come along and streamline things like maintenance and such like and you can't go along and just run old equipment. I'm looking to do other developments here uh, which partly will be associated with the foundation, Henry's foundation, which was formed after I lost my son. Uh, this is likely to be in conjunction with various colleges, uh, and we've had discussions on this, and it's now partly up to planners, and partly up to then uh, subject to the planners being happy, uh, being able to um, get the necessary support, etc., to be able to construct what we would like to do. But in the meantime, we're concentrating entirely on the 
existing circuit and bringing that up to a world-class standard. And uh, I think that that uh, is a challenge, but uh, a challenge which obviously I enjoy because when you go out and see, uh, for instance, some of those youngsters sitting in a bambino yeah. and going around the circuit and they've got these nice new carts and things and then you see the look on their faces when they're finished. That's, that's very satisfying. It's good to see uh, these kids, whether they go on and get involved in racing further on or not, or whether they become an engineer or a mechanic, or whether they just walk away from it later on. Uh, at least they will experience their first uh, four wheels uh, and perhaps their first skid, the lock-up of the brakes, on the track yeah, and on not out there on the road. Moving on from that last point, Yifa. so the motor industry is ever growing incredibly fast. Do you think it's easy for us youngsters nowadays to get into the motor e industry? No. Uh, the problem, of course, is that uh, cost. Yeah. Because uh, motorsport, I mean, here we're trying to uh, obviously contain costs, etc., uh, by efficiency. And part of the change in the stock and change in the rest of things is all to create more efficiency. Uh, and a better end result, but um, if we're talking about motorsport as such, uh, the problem is somewhat similar to what you have in other uh, sports as well. I mean, look at football and grassroots football, you know, has a little bit of a problem because you have up the top there, uh, the Premier League, etc., who grab all the support, all the notice and everything else uh, and uh, it doesn't really filter down to giving support you know, to uh, youngsters from the lowest level. And the motorsport is very much the same uh, in that there is too many formulas uh, and uh, there's uh, a dearth of involvement and support through those formulas. Uh, Formula One tends to grab everything. It's up there. Yes, some of the teams do put an input into a little of the uh, younger generation. Uh, you have people like Red Bull who run uh, a lot of teams and uh, give a lot of support to people who show promise. But just the same, uh, I think that world motorsport does need to be somewhat simplified. And I think the structure is too complicated and that we could do with simplifying it and with certainly having a rationalization of formulas and not let commercial forces totally control it. What is your plans for the future of the Auto Park Carton Circuit? How do you plan to improve it and how do you plan to still bigger the horizon but also keep it a, a people circuit? Well, what we started is continuing. I mean, for instance, uh, it'll be about in, uh, sort of six weeks, all the circuit will be completed with the new barriers, uh, etc., all in place, and the general tidy up, all the runoff areas will be completed, etc. Uh, there will be other things like equipment on the circuit which will. Uh, also have been changed. We then come along and we will have an up we are having an upgrade on the Mini GP circuit, which is a place where the very first starter 
yeah. uh, in an electric car can take place, and also the arrive and drive circuit. Uh, that will uh, certainly be um, upgraded as well. Uh, we're expecting the uh, reception area in the paddock uh, to be upgraded and provide better facilities. And we're looking at, we've started uh, doing all the catering side here and improving that, so we're looking at that. It is uh, a case of where we have two major TV events here this year. We have one, the FKS, which is in two weeks' time, which is one which is supported by the, some of the Formula One fraternity, including Bernie Eccleston. Uh, and then uh, we have the British Championship event, uh, which comes somewhat later. Uh, this is the British Championship, so someone can call themselves. Um, if they win the, that series, the British Champion, which should, if the system was right, give them a leap up into something else. But because the system isn't, they will still have a hard time. However, um, but more, I would like to develop a longer circuit with another extension and that extension to be then available for some road safety training and for some work by colleges etc on testing and evaluation of uh, things that they do within the college in their engineering and motorsport programs. Uh, so that's something which would have two purposes. It would also lead to there being a potential for perhaps a, an international race here uh, when you join the whole thing up. And uh, it would be even more exciting than the exciting Butmore we have today. But uh, at this moment, the main concentration is uh, because the other, as I said earlier, depends upon planning and on the finance side because you can't, uh, in a way, spend it before you make it. So uh, we're concentrating on putting together all the upgrading of Buckmore Park as it is. Uh, obviously keeping the circuit, but doing all the things which frankly to bring it into what I consider is acceptable uh, in this day and age, uh, a standard uh, that we can be proud of. So they won't be stopping until this is the best karting circuit in the world? Pardon? So you won't be stopping until this is the best karting circuit in the world? The most important thing is it is one of the most satisfying ones. Okay. Satisfying ones. Uh, there will be other good circuits around the world and everything else, but the overall experience for youngsters uh, from uh, the age of sort of five years of age upwards uh, to all our corporate customers hopefully will be a very special experience which they get here at Buckmore. Where do you see the karting circuit in ten years? How do you think it will be doing? if the people be still be, if you still have the same feel to it? If you look at the speed of change which has come about in our lives, and uh, obviously you're a young man still, yeah. I'm sort of somewhat older, so I've seen a lot more change yeah. uh, than you would have done. Uh, but particularly in recent years, the speed of change brought about, not all for the best, I, I'm perhaps saying that as an older person, not all for the best, certainly, uh, but uh, the fact is we have to live with it. Who can say in uh, ten years' time what will uh, be the course? All one can do is uh, go along and as new developments, new technology comes forth, you see how you can evolve, uh, use that and utilize that within what you're offering here. Uh, I can't see that people will cease to want to come together with machinery. 
Um, people often ask me, what was the main pleasure? And I said, that relationship that you created with machinery, just like with people, at times uh, that relationship was not the best that it could be uh, because it, this didn't work or that didn't work quite. Uh, uh, but at other times, when you really came together with a piece of machinery, it was so important. I mean, I hear this talk about you know, driverless cars and the rest of it, and I think, dear me, do we want to sit in, uh, uh, be in an age whereby you just sit there and you do nothing except press buttons or do this. Uh, I think that people will still want to be involved and uh, hopefully, uh, obviously, uh, you get developments of carts. I think that certainly on the cart track here and we're involved in a development at the moment of that you will get some carts which won't any longer be powered by uh, so internal combustion engines but you will get uh, electric powered carts uh, at the moment they are quite strong on indoor tracks where speeds are very low and obviously there's other considerations but also in the outside world I think you have that this will have some advantages in that you can take carting into places where before, because of potential noise on slight pollution purposes, you couldn't have it, you have it, but at the same time, I think there will be a balance between those that still want to have internal combustion engines, which are changing all the time, becoming more efficient as well, and so I don't know what it'll be like in 10 years, but I think that um, that depends on people still wanting to take their little challenge on in life. Yes, yes. Which they get when they come along and sit behind the wheel of a cart. It's truly like just a wonderful experience, isn't it? Well, it's an experience and some will have dreams of being a racer in Formula One or something like that. Others will go along and just want to do karting and stop, but the important thing is uh, that they have, for a period of their life, they have a, a pleasing experience of coming together with a piece of machinery. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's also, of course, a co competitive element, because all around the country you've got uh, youngsters competing. I mean, all you need to do, if you want to do a nice little piece also for the college, is come down and come down for this FKS meeting, which is going to be here in two weeks' time. And you'll see uh, these youngsters out there at uh, different ages going through, uh, coming to a machinery to compete with each other. And uh, it's also uh, educational uh, because uh, nowadays they'll all be working those uh, kids out there uh, youngsters out there will all be working with um, data so when they come out after practice they'll be going into their awning or where they are and looking at the data and seeing what they were doing how many revs they were doing all these various bits and pieces so that is also in its own way a bit of a learning curve. I remember that I gave my son the job of looking after a computer. Very easy for me because I'm not particularly computer literate. So uh, I said, look, it's all the data except uh, so we worked down and sat down and he put it out and we analyzed where he braked, where he did this, where he did that and everything else. When he came to change schools at 10 years of age, his IT teacher turned around and said to him, thank you, Henry, for teaching me how to get the best out of my computer. And that all came from purely the experience he'd gained. So, carting is not just carting, there's so much more behind it than oh, we just You can make it what you want. 
You can make it just as a fun day out and everything else, or you can come along, be a little more serious, and, uh, well, a big learning curve. OK, so thank you ever so much for having this interview with me, and it's been a pleasure to you, such a famous man. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Well, uh, you know, the big thing in life you need to do is to have uh, some enthusiasm about something, some emotional involvement. If you have an emotional involvement in doing something in your life, then that will be the driving force that will take you forward. I got in a drive, a, a emotional involvement early on with playing with spanners, tinkering with spanners, putting things together and then riding them, etc. And that has stood me in good stead all my life. So hopefully when we get our learning and training centre going here, we will get more youngsters from the community involved in following something which they are emotionally involved in. And that is something which will uh, stand them in good stead for the rest of their life. Thank you.